NHS because the NHS faces, we're told, its hardest January ever as junior doctors in England are set to strike for six days. That's from tomorrow at 7 a.m. This, as a new report, has claimed that there'll be one cancer diagnosis every minute by 2040. We are still seeing huge waiting lists for the most basic treatment, um, long delays to see a GP, long delays to uh, uh, get treated in A&E, long delays to get cancer treatment, diabetes treatment, goodness knows what. Uh, our people are having hip operations, knee operations, and goodness knows what, cancelled over the six days uh, these strikes going ahead. And a lot of people really worrying that actually in an emergency, will they get the care they need? Uh, well, joining me right now is Dr Tony O'Sullivan. He's co-chair of Keep Our NHS Public. They're a campaign group that opposes the privatisation of the NHS, even though no one's actually promising to actually privatise the NHS. So I'm not quite sure why they opposed something that wasn't on the cards anyway. But, uh, Tony O'Sullivan, <laughs> Happy New Year. Thank you for joining us. Thank you, Julian. Um, I, I, do, you, do you still think, by the way, just before we get into the strikes, that the Tories are planning to privatise the NHS? Because they've been in power a long time and they seem to be making a big hash job of not doing it. Oh, well, that, that's a, a good question. It, it, the answer really is that uh, privatisation isn't just a, a situation where people have to pay for their care. It's also about uh, the private industry taking over NHS functions. So, for example, the, the, there are more cataract operations now being done by private uh, c companies than the NHS for, cataract for, operations N for, for NHS patients. I'm sorry, I didn't, I didn't catch no, that. But how awful? Why, 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 why is that about? I mean, look, I, I'm, a, I'm a child of an NHS GP. Um, I've always used the NHS. I'm, I'm kind of of the view that as long as an operation takes place, um, I, I do want care to be free at the point of need. I don't care whether you've got a council estate or a country estate, you should be able to get health care in this country. But but I don't care who carries it out. No, I, I understand that. And it's a really good question. So let me just give the example of cataract surgery. Um, there, there are some parts of the country at the moment where NHS care for serious conditions like macular degeneration are under real stress because the, f the funding for that, for example, uh, prompt monthly injection and injections mm. to pre prevent the deterioration of macular degeneration, that is under real strain in some areas because the funding uh, of eye care has been stressed by the massive increase in cataract operations being performed by the private sector. Right. And the waiting list uh, for ophthalmology appointments hasn't gone down. The, the proportion okay. of ophthalmology appointments... I mean, it appointments seems to me that people are having private time. operations because they're waiting too yeah. long on the NHS because the NHS no. is ready to do it. And we're always told it's about funding. The NHS has the largest funding it's ever had. Yeah. I don't, you know, it does seem... Bizarre. Listen, can, yeah, I, can, just, I, can, let, I, can I go on to the just strikes, let me, though? Just let because me we haven't that got point. half an hour. I want to go on to the strikes. Well, well you I don't asked want to be me, talking sorry. about ophthalmology. You asked me and then you're not letting me answer, but anyway. Okay. Well, the let's... point is that there are many, many people who don't even know they have cataracts who yeah. are going to, going to local optometrists, finding that they've got an early cataract and being rushed through prematurely when they don't actually need cataract operations. So the numbers of cataract operations are okay. going through the roof. And that's the, that's the perverse incentive. Of, of okay. the private sector okay. providing an NHS care. Okay. So that's Fair a really point. good example. Okay, Julia. let's okay, let, let's let's go back though. Let's go back to the junior doctor strike. Yeah. We've seen it with numerous strikes before. We've had them they've been upping the number of days they're carrying out them at the same time. This one is the longest by far, six days in a row, starting at seven a.m. Uh, tomorrow. Um, the biggest worry is the timing, the dating of this, because obviously we had strikes before Christmas as well. But we know January, February, two of the most high pressure months. I know we, we NHS is constantly in crisis. The winter crisis just stretches the spring crisis, summer crisis, autumn crisis, and back into winter again. But we know we've got COVID around. Yes, it still exists. We've got flu. Uh, we've got a massive backlog, of, you know, over 7 million plus people waiting for other operations already. I'm of the view that doctors have a right to strike. They have a right to say, I don't want my pay to have been eroded by inflation. And they're, they're in talks with the government. I think the government needs to pull their act together. So do the BMA, who represent the junior doctors. However, I think going out on strike for six days in the middle of winter in a country that is undergoing flu and COVID and all these delays. I think it's immoral. Do you agree? Well, no, I don't. But I, I do really regret the fact that the, we're in the situation where NHS staff in their hundreds of thousands have had to be on strike since December last year. We haven't had of course, to be the, on the, the first junior doctor strike was, was in February. Uh, and the, 
part of the NH, uh, part of the trade union legislation that the government's brought in means that uh, unions have to ballot their members um, uh, for, for the go ahead to, to take strike action, and the that only lasts six months. So there's a time frame w within which uh, a union who has a genuine grievance to uh, address pay erosion and wanting the government to engage as the main negotiators, they have a time frame where they have to take action within a certain amount of time. So the, the, uh, there's another point, of course, which is a separate point, uh, but just in one sentence. Uh, winter crises are in, in England are met with amazement in France or Germany because they have funding for their, for their health services that don't regard uh, in, increased use of the of, of health services in winter. Um, as I, a I hate to they, break they, it to you, Tony, and I have family members who live in France, so I'm really mm. aware of their health care. You have to pay to go and see your GP in France, that you'll get an appointment as soon as you want one. You you have to, you know, you, you have they have a social insurance system. They don't have an NHS system like ours. Is it possible that it is the system, it is the actually setup of their health care system that enables more efficiency and patients being put at the centre of it as opposed to NHS management? Well, of course, we all know, and I'm sure you do, and, and most uh, informed experts know that when the NHS is funded properly to the point where it can run efficiently, it's actually a whole lot cheaper than fr France or Germany or Switzerland. Oh, but it still has, has been... No, no, even... Um, even no no been... even when it had the funding it had under tony blair and gordon brown which was much higher per capita even then it had the worst it had worse outcomes than most other european and other countries around the world uh, who have who have similar economies it had worse outcomes if you, you you might get treated but your chances of living at the end of it were lower well you know as well as i do that mortality is a, a, a factor that's dependent on Poverty and social conditions much more. There's no than poverty in France. Healthcare. No, it's no, it's that no. <laughs> but, but, yeah, thank you. That, that, you're, you're making my point for no, me. No, so I was being the, sarcastic. The, the, the point, the point is that the, the 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 healthcare in France and Germany is good. There are good. There are good systems. It's They're better also than ours. They're a whole lot more expensive. It's They're better a whole lot than more, ours. They're a whole lot more expensive. They weren't better than ours. The, the the Commonwealth Fund, as, as you probably know, even even Jeremy Hunt used the, the Commonwealth Fund analysis of, of comparative health systems around the world, and up to 2015 data, the NHS was still regarded as the best in the world. It is per, no, no longer. It is spent, no longer the best in the world. Per pound spent, hmm? but there's no evidence in recent years of more money going in and more operations and better quality treatment happening. We know actually we've seen productivity fall in the NHS. Look, we we definitely had some years when it wasn't funded enough. It definitely was under pressure. It was pretty much the only health uh, system in the world that closed down to everything but COVID. Uh, pretty much, uh, no other country did that, which is why they've not seen the devastating consequences. But come back to your question. You, you, you're skirting around it. Is it not immoral at a time when people are dying because they're not getting the care they need for whatever reason? It may be all the Tories' fault. It may be, you know, the COVID's fault, whatever it is. But for whatever reason, is it not immoral for doctors to say, we're going to go on strike now in the depths of winter when people need us the most? Well, I'm not skirting around it at all. I really regret... Yes or no? Is it immoral? Situation. No. Why not? It is not People a, are going to die immoral. because it, it the doctors are on strike. You don't think that's immoral? The, the, the emergency care is in place. The continuity of care is in place. There, there is no doubt that strike action uh, has an impact on waiting lists. But of the 100 million uh, appointments in the NHS in, in a year, uh, there are... Um, 12 million of those appointments are cancelled by the hospitals themselves and millions of, of appointments are cancelled by patients needing to rearrange. One million has have been affected by strike action and there's no skirting around that I, and I, I would don't deny it. But the question is why and the why is that the NHS has been plunged into a situation where there's mass demoralisation of staff on this government's watch and you know that you're saying you've got uh, relatives in, in healthcare. If, you, if one respects the NHS and its staff and one knows that the, the country absolutely needs a health service that functions then we need to go past the uh, the uh, claims of government of, of highest ever
funding and realize that the funding per need, per patient need with complex needs, that actually has gone down okay. over the 